Good morning, Wham! How you doing, guys? Uh, my son is going to film today. Hello. Hi. And uh, we're just, I'm going to read to you a story, like a bedtime story, about Christopher Columbus. Follow the dream. The story of Christopher Columbus by Peter Siss. I'm going to read you two stories. This will be the first one. Follow the Dream by Peter Siss. And both of the authors seem to have different opinions of Columbus. So let's hear about them, shall we? Over 500 years ago, in the city of Genoa in Italy, a little boy was born his name was Christopher Columbus. It was expected that Christopher would grow up to be a weaver like his father. But Christopher Columbus had his own ideas about his future. He dreamed of faraway places and people he read about in the Travels of Marco Polo. Marco Polo. He watched the ships in the harbor of Genoa and listened to the merchants and sailors as they unloaded their cargoes of exotic goods and spices brought from the Orient. And he kept weaving dreams of adventure and discovery. As the years went by, Christopher Columbus formed a plan. He would reach the Orient by a new route. Rather than traveling east over a thousand miles of difficult terrain, he would sail west across the Atlantic Ocean. Fulfilling his dream was not easy. He had to become a an expert sailor and had to learn how to read maps and the stars for navigation. He traveled throughout the Mediterranean in Europe, looking for a sponsor to provide him with the ships, supplies, and crew he would need for the long journey west. Everyone thought Columbus's plan was too risky or too expensive or just impossible. But Columbus always expected that someday he would be granted his ships. He approached the king and queen of Spain. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella listened quietly to Christopher Columbus, but his ideas about the world were so different from those of their advisors. They told him... No. Columbus had a second audience with the king and queen, but it went no better than the first. His proposal to find a new trade route to the Orient by sailing west was rejected once more. Uh, loser. Six years later, Christopher Columbus was still the only one to believe that land lay to the west, across the ocean, and that riches would be found there. But now, Queen Isabella was intrigued. She offered the king her jewels as a token of her faith in Columbus's plan. Persuaded by his wife's conviction, the king decided to take a chance. He would provide Christopher Columbus with three ships and a crew of 90 men. The ships were stocked with food and water and goods for trading. Six months later, on August 3rd, 1492, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria set sail for Palo, Spain. They sailed from Palo, Spain. The three ships headed west, taking advantage of the trade winds, 
which Columbus hoped would carry them directly to their destination. The sea was calm, and at first it seemed the journey would be easy. But from the beginning, the crew was uneasy. The endless expanse of sea with its unfamiliar birds and fish and seaweed frightened them. They wanted to turn back. Columbus was determined to keep sailing west. In his cabin on the Santa Maria, Columbus kept the record of the voyage in the ship's logs, but he actually kept two logs. In one, he shortened the distances to reassure the rebellious crew. Yeah, in other words, he lied. Day after day, through all kinds of weather, the three ships continued on their westward course. There. On the 71st day, a little piece of land appeared on the horizon. Columbus assumed it was part of Japan. On October 12, 1492, just after midday, Christopher Columbus landed on a beach of white coral, claimed the land for the king and queen of Spain, knelt and gave thanks to God and expected to see the treasures of the Orient. Today, we knew we know that what Christopher Columbus found was not a new route to the Orient, but a new continent. Columbus, however, never really knew that he had reached America. All right. Hmm, so... Connor, what do you think uh, Peter Sis thought about Columbus? Um, well... Was he a hero or a villain to the writer? I think... I think it was a little bit, you know, of both maybe, like... Both? Yeah. Th does it say that he was a bad guy and a villain? Mm -hmm. No. No, so, it's, so he thinks he's... I mean, I know he talks the truth yeah. about mm -hmm. not finding Japan, right? Yeah. So is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. But what does he think about him in general? A good guy or? I mean, I think, you know, I think he liked him a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, so follow the dream, right? Mm -hmm. And in, the, in his forward, he said, uh, he says that um, he always uh, wanted to follow in Columbus's footsteps and go to the new world of America as a little boy. So. It's all right, so we'll have another story, and you can compare and tell me what you think of Columbo, Columbus, a hero or a villain. What do you think, Connor? Or do you want to wait till after the next book? Um, I'll say I'll say what I think now. Okay. And I'll Decide compare. Later. Yeah, later. I think he was a pretty good man, but he. Sometimes he might not have made the best decisions. and. Okay. All right. I mean, I thought he was a pretty good man. All right. So we'll find out and we'll learn the truth or try to learn some truth about Columbus. All right. So we'll see you later and we'll read you another book very shortly.